Detective Jack Radcliffe received a call from his niece, who said that her father had forgotten to pick her up. Neither the mother nor the father is answering calls. Jack went to get Ashley and took her to a diner. The girl is very upset about the parents' neglect, especially her father's. Jack believes that his brother is not such a bad person. The next day at work, he received another call from Ashley, thanking him for talking to her parents. Today they bought Ashley the bike she had been asking for. Of course the girl understands that the parents don't really care about her, but she's glad to have at least one close person. Jack has a lot of work, so he promised to call back later. That evening, he received another call from Ashley. Due to interference, nothing could be heard, but it was clear that the girl was very frightened. The call abruptly ended after a minute. Jack immediately called back but got to voicemail. This made him worry, so he decided to go to his brother's house. Inside, Jack found a mess and then all family members lifeless, including his brother Garrett and Ashley. Someone had broken into the house and attacked them. Despite being a seasoned police officer, Jack couldn't contain his emotions. He had never seen anything more horrific before. Soon backup arrived. Jack's colleague, Bobby Owens, sincerely sympathized with him. Jack however was in a detached state, not reacting to anything. Funerals took place. Jack feels guilty for not being able to protect his loved ones. Now he prays to God for another chance. Bobby Owens tries to support him, saying their main task is to catch those who did this. Jack reviews family videos. He loved his niece and considered her like a daughter. But now she's gone, along with Garrett. To numb the pain, Jack drinks a lot. Suddenly he received a call from Ashley's phone. This left Jack in shock, so he didn't answer in time. Gathering himself, Jack called back, but the subscriber was out of range. Jack couldn't hold back his tears. Later, he visited the police station and asked Bobby about Ashley's phone. It was supposed to be seized as evidence, but apparently someone dropped it. Returning to his brother's house, Jack found the phone in the bath, where Ashley was last alive. Suddenly he received another call from her and answered this time. Hearing Ashley's voice, Jack was shocked and asked who it was. At that moment, the niece's phone was in his hand. Ashley only said that the lines may have crossed. Before hanging up, she expressed hope that uncle is okay. Jack doesn't know what to think. It all seemed like madness. Bobby visited him, bringing food. Bobby is very concerned about his friend, while Jack can't get the phone call out of his mind. Jack feels like he's losing his mind. Bobby said that in such circumstances, it's normal. However, Bobby is not just here to cheer Jack up. He is now a suspect in Garrett's case. If Jack has anything to say, Bobby wants to know now. Sergeant Roger Lee questioned him. Jack had a complicated relationship with his brother, who was involved in substances trafficking and had caught the police's attention multiple times. Certainly, Jack is angered by these suspicions. That same evening, he received another call from Ashley and heard her voice. Jack doesn't understand what's happening. When he asked Ashley where she was calling from, the girl replied that she's in her room right now. After that, Ashley began to repeat what she had said before, including about the bike. It was as if those terrible events never happened. Continuing to talk to Ashley, Jack went to their house and asked his niece to take a spray paint can from the shed and draw a big red cross on the door. Ashley found it strange but promised to fulfill the request. After that, she ended the call. Jack hysterically laughed, realizing he was going mad. Of course nothing happened. However when Jack entered the shed, he felt someone's presence. A few seconds later, a red cross actually appeared on the door. Jack panicked and ran out. Ashley called him back, and he asked her what today's date was. Ashley replied that it was June 25th. In reality, today is June 29th. The girl also said that she was worried because her father came in some white antique car. Jack asked her to tell him the car's license plate, but Ashley couldn't see it. Jack looked around the brother's house while still talking to Ashley. He asked his niece to remember if there was anything unusual the day before. Perhaps her father stopped taking medication. However, Ashley couldn't recall anything unusual. On the contrary, everything was fine between her parents recently. In one of the books, Jack found a sticker with the name Georgie. But Ashley knew no one by the name of Georgie. Entering Ashley's room, Jack saw that June 28th was the last date marked on her calendar. Three days left until the tragic incident. Ashley said her father had come again, so she had to go. After that, the call ended. Jack tries to make sense of what's happening. The next day, he began investigating the case. He has two days left to prevent the tragedy. His boss, Howard Kelshen, summoned him and demanded an explanation for why he's investigating the case on his own. Jack admitted that there are things that bother him. In the past, Ashley has gone through her father's car looking for leads. Meanwhile, the boss told Jack that a person named Georgie is indeed involved in Garrett's substances-related case. Eyewitness testimony helped to create a sketch of the man, 
but no one has been able to find him. Georgie seemed like a ghost. Howard advised Jack to take a vacation and stay home. Jack said he would, but secretly he continued investigating the case on his own. One day, he met Bobby and shared his findings. Everything points to the mayhem at the house being staged. Jack received a call from Ashley, who said she found Georgie's address in the father's notebook. At that moment, Ashley was walking her dog and planned to visit the uncle. Hearing this, Jack told her to leave immediately. Supposedly, his house is under surveillance because his brother's in trouble. Therefore, if he and Ashley meet, they must pretend nothing is happening. Ashley was surprised but complied with the request, then dictated the address. Jack went straight there. The house was seized by the bank, a lock hung on the door. An antique car drove by. Jack went through the letters in the mailbox, among which was express mail. Comparing it with the case materials, Jack found a match. Suddenly men in the passing car started shooting. Jack managed to hide, but he got wounded. Jack got into his car and drove, gradually losing consciousness due to the wound. Despite this, he managed to reach the police station. Everyone was in shock, seeing the injured detective who urgently asked to show him the case materials. While colleagues called for an ambulance, Jack tried to explain to Bobby what was happening. Of course Bobby thought Jack was delirious. It's Tuesday morning today, which means someone will break into Garrett's house in the evening and take the lives of his entire family. Receiving a call from Ashley, Jack rushed out onto the street. Losing consciousness, he asked his niece to call the police and tell them that someone is hunting her father. She should also tell them about the box with substances under the father's bed. Dictating Bobby's number to her, Jack lost consciousness. An ambulance arrived. Bobby promised that they would find out who did this at any cost. Jack experienced cardiac arrest. In the past, Ashley had come to her uncle and asked him to explain what was happening, but he of course did not understand what she meant. Angered, the girl left. Ashley returned home upset. Her parents on the other hand were in a good mood. Garrett wrote a song for his wife. He dreams of becoming a famous musician and gaining recognition someday. Ashley knows that her father is hiding something under the bed. Barely holding back her emotions, she left the house and saw the white car nearby. She immediately called 911 and said she needed help. Something terrible is going to happen today. Two realities intertwined. Entering the brother's house, Jack found all family members lifeless. He could never change the past. Jack was disoriented and didn't understand what was happening. It turned out that the funeral had already taken place. Jack behaved strangely, asking many questions, bewildering Bobby. Studying the case materials, Jack realized there were differences, for example, Ashley's backpack was wet for some reason. This time everything was happening a bit differently. Two realities ran parallel. While Jack entered his brother's house, Ashley saw an antique car and followed its owner. Jack tries to find clues in the house. At one point, he saw a sheet with images of cars. One of them was circled with a red marker. Ashley witnessed some people surrounding her father. She immediately called her uncle and told him what was happening. Jack ordered her to leave immediately and not come home under any circumstances. The call dropped because Ashley's cell phone was dead. With trembling hands, she wrote down the license plate numbers of the cars parked here on a napkin. Seeing the white antique Porsche, Jack left a voicemail for Bobby, requesting information about the car. Past and present events are happening simultaneously. Ashley ran away, but someone chased her. Jack was already here, but not alone. There was a gunfight between him and some man. In an attempt to escape, Ashley dropped her backpack into the water. The girl didn't stop, while Jack injured, bandaged himself. Suddenly he received another call from Ashley, who had hidden in a cafe where she charged her phone. Jack asked his niece to describe the people in the cars as accurately as possible. Ashley said she had written down the car numbers on a napkin but dropped her backpack while running. In the present, Jack came to the same cafe, showing the customers a police badge. Due to the injury, he found it difficult to stand but managed. Jack asked his niece to do another strange thing, to take chewing gum from the vase and stick it under the table. In the present, the same gum was indeed under the table. Jack still doesn't understand how this is possible. He tried to explain to his niece that there are two weeks of time between them right now. Ashley couldn't believe what she heard. To make sure, she stuck a gum of a different color under the table and asked her uncle to name the color. He accurately named it, making her believe. Jack confessed that if they don't change the past together, she and her family will perish today. That's why she must go as far away as possible. It's the only way to save herself. In tears, Ashley promised to do it. Arriving at the station, she waited for the bus. In the present, Jack found Ashley's backpack among the evidence. However, all the inscriptions from the paper napkin had been erased. Seeing injured Jack, colleagues were about to call an ambulance, but he assured them everything was okay. 
Jack tried to explain to Howard and Bobby that Ashley lost her backpack on that day. So, someone must have later planted it in the house. Moreover, Bobby checked the white car by the number and found out it belonged to Sergeant Roger Lee. Hearing this, Jack was shocked. It was Roger Lee who interrogated him two days ago. In the past, Ashley is still waiting for the bus. She called her father, but it went to voicemail. Her mother also didn't answer the call. Without waiting for the bus, Ashley left. In the present, the detectives met in the parking lot. Bobby and Howard revealed to Jack that Georgie is not a real person but a group of corrupt policemen. Howard and Bobby remained silent as per the orders of the Internal Affairs Division. Now they intend to expose this conspiracy within the department. Of course the Georgie composite sketch is also a fabrication for cover. Judging by what Jack found out, the second most important person in this group is Roger Lee. They need to report this to the higher-ups immediately. Not knowing who to turn to for help, Ashley called Bobby, who picked her up. Ashley is confident that Bobby, Jack's best friend and colleague, will protect her family. Meanwhile, Jack is puzzled about the brother's involvement in all this. Howard said that Garrett has gone back to his old ways and made a deal with one of Georgie's associates. Jack begins to understand that something is not right. Howard and Bobby are taking him in an unknown direction. Jack stealthily prepared his gun from the others. Finally, the journey came to an end. Everyone got out of the car. Howard ordered Bobby to send a message to someone named Ives. Suddenly Bobby shot, taking Howard's life and instructing Jack to put the gun down. In the past, Bobby assured Ashley that he would talk to her parents and settle everything. The parents came out of the house to meet their daughter. When Bobby pulled out Ashley's wet backpack and a gun from the trunk, it became clear that he was one of Georgie's group. Garrett begged him to spare them, but Bobby ordered everyone to enter the house. In the present, Bobby demands Jack to explain how he found out about the backpack. Bobby is sure that Jack has an informant. In the past, Bobby demands Ashley to explain where she learned about the box under the father's bed. Jack revealed that his informant is Ashley. Of course Bobby didn't believe it, as Ashley is no longer alive. Garrett tried to convince Bobby to put the gun down and talk calmly. Garrett had a chance to take his family and leave, but he didn't take it, despite Bobby's warnings. After that, Bobby took Garrett's life. While Susan tried to stop Bobby, Ashley escaped and locked herself in her room. Bobby shouted for her to open the door. Breaking the window, Ashley managed to escape. However, Bobby continued to pursue her. In the end Ashley hid in a warehouse building. Bobby quickly found her. Ashley was in a hopeless situation. Bobby gave Jack a final chance to reveal the informant. At that moment, Ashley called him. Jack turned on the loudspeaker so that Bobby could hear their conversation. Jack told his niece that if she saves herself, she will save him too. At that moment, Bobby wounded him. Ashley saw Bobby leaving. Taking advantage of this, she tried to escape, but Bobby pursued her again. Ashley arrived at Jack's house. Seeing Bobby with a gun, Jack realized that his colleague is not who he claims to be. Jack managed to shoot first. The alternate reality disappeared. Jack embraced the crying Ashley. That's how they saved each other. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel not to miss more exciting new products. Also the authors will be pleased if you leave your opinion in the comments.